Hello Commander, action here. This video is a little bit different from our regular ones since I will be showing you precisely everything that I did in my planet to min-max our current build. Of course, as of tradition, I will give you a little bit of an introduction to what is happening in our game, but if you just want to skip ahead to the part, you can go ahead to this timestamp. Some of you guys suggested it and now we also have it. If you want to know everything that I do in our playthroughs regarding Empire decisions, leader decisions and much more, I'm releasing a brand new series for our channel members called Every Action. It's a complete gameplay without any cuts so you know literally every click that I do and I'm always available for clarifying any decisions to you, Commander. Now let's get into it. My command calls out for 5,000 commanders to replenish our ranks after the recent losses. Our navy needs you, commander, to help us fight the countless enemies that threatens our own existence. Enlist today and be a part of something greater. So our plan right now is to improve our nanite production because since in our last videos we have nanite ascended, we are now in a pretty good position to start improving our economy overall, which is pathetic at the moment. However, I will be doing everything here in order to get massive amounts of technology by 2280 basically. So we have a 20 year plan to make this empire work. So right now we finish the synchronicity tradition and this unlocked another ascension perk. In this build we are going for the archaeology project. Since we are rogue servitor we do need very good planets so we can fill them up and later on skyrocket our technology because for every biotrophy job that we have we increase our job efficiency by plus one percent. So yeah it's pretty OP if we stack up a bunch of biotrophies and the best way for doing this today would be on an Ecumenopolis. And since we also have a very good amount of minerals per month and a very solid influence output, we can create many Ecumenopolis across all of our planets. As for our next tradition, since we have come across a very hostile empire to us, we can grab the supremacy so we would have a better fighting chance if they were to attack us. Of course, we could also grab you unwielding which would be the more defensive approach however supremacy works both ways after all attack may be the best defense and since we are nanites we can actually utilize one of these special edicts provide us with some resources in our case we could increase our monthly energy credits by plus 50 percent however energy is not the main bottleneck for us at the moment and instead it is alloys so what we can do is activate the core Originated nano complexes, giving us plus 25% of monthly alloys at the only cost of 6.9 thousand nanites. Yeah, it's a hefty cost, but later on it will be irrelevant. Ah, the birth of the galactic community. This is a very major thing for us for some reasons. The first one is that we establish contact with pretty much everyone in the galaxy. I'm not very fond of these guys. They are a little bit scary just because of the flags. This enables us to rush some very good resolutions. The best one being the galactic market for now. And we'll also propose a charter of workers right. Because our goal here is to achieve up into the balance in the middle to reduce our empire size from pops by minus 10 percent. Regarding our economy you can see that we have improved a lot from it basically by improving our star bases having the solar panels network and also the hydroponics bay. This completely eliminated our food deficit and also helped us a lot with extra 224 energy from star bases. Now we obviously have the nanite harvester which consumes a lot of energy 8 energy each but they produce us with those precious nanite deposits and now that we know everyone we can start trading in some contacts until we find the curators or the artisan enclave those guys know exactly the same amount of empires as we do but eventually we'll find someone else that knows other ones these guys they know at least one other empire so i think if we bribe them with a little bit of living metal yeah they would accept it 
oh well we traded with everyone that we could and we still didn't find the creators unfortunately but this happens sometimes eventually we will find them now arc furnace technology i know we rolled this deck very late into the game however this is a major power spike for your economy since you'll be able to have massive amounts of mining station output and basically the minerals and alloys that you're seeing right here will be doubled when we build our three arc furnaces now we have reached one of our most important power spikes which is the arc furnace what we can do is look out for systems that have a massive deposit sites so in our capital we have a size 20 so we should already start building up an arc furnace there on mercury i just scouted and all of these systems are at maximum size 13 so <laughs> pretty bad systems however here on Fridar we have a consolation prize a size 20 system which is fantastic let's just go ahead to build a construction ship to build it there and that's gonna be our second best system size 20 we do not have a single one bigger than size 13 which is very unlucky to be honest in most of your runs you end up with at least a couple of size 18 plus systems but yeah my friends i got very very unlucky here but we will make it work don't you worry we will build our second one here on yamen for the sole reason that it is a size 13 so our third best option and because it has a very large nanite deposit since one of our colonies is stationed here and the nanite deposits commanders they actually increase depending on the cosmic object so for instance asteroids which can be at maximum a size 3 or 4 if i remember correctly Correctly. Well, they'll have a much lower cap for the nanites than a planet, which will produce a lot more resources. Ideally, you want to look out for systems which has a very large amount of planets and not a very large amount of asteroids. But that's just a little tip if you are running the nanites. And another mid-game power spike, as I have covered in some of my videos, is forming a federation the earliest possible in the game. They weren't very likely to find a federation with us however we extorted so many favors using the spy network that we can actually just force them into creating a research cooperative with us so our new federation is now formed and we actually established contact with the artisan troop fantastic so we can hire them all oh, the shroud walkers as well amazing so we began as the leader of the federation you should assign always an official there in our case i think i'm just gonna hire a shroud walker teacher let's do this since it will already start at level 5 and we can just put this fella to work in our federation then after some time passes we will gain opinion with our allies and this opinion will actually help us to expand our federation centralization and also expand the succession term making us the sole ruler of the federation forever so because of the level of our delegate we are gaining plus 5 monthly cohesion impact which is fantastic if we only assign the level level 1 it would only be a plus 1 so yeah this actually helps us a lot now i have gathered 10,000 minerals and we have 15 colonies which we can improve utilizing all of these minerals now i will be covering here very quickly for you some of our decisions so you can get a little bit of an idea on how i run my empires this will all be detailed in our every action videos which if you're a channel member you will always have access to, to to see literally every action that we do in our playthroughs so here on our capital world since we already have plenty of minerals and energy coming from both stations and other planets we want to specialize our capital into advanced resource production so we'll start by replacing all of the mining districts with the central nexus however we will only do a little bit of them not replacing all of these because it would consume all of our minerals just from one planet 
planet and the build queue goes one by one, not every single one at the same time. So it's best for you to scatter your build queue across all of your planets. This way you will be constructing a new building every single one of your planets at the same time. Here on ground efficiency we just have a very simple basic resource output world. It, it is fantastic, however we have no needs of expanding this world for now, so we won't be spending any of our minerals. As a matter of fact, we can even resettle some of the population that is working here, such as the Hunter Seeker drones, those guys have no use here, and the logistic drones can be utilized somewhere else as well. The bio trophies, however, we will keep them here because they affect their own growth, so the more bio trophies you have on your colonies, the faster they will grow. That's why we are maintaining them here, although they only provide efficiency for complex as drones, which we only have the replicators, but later on we'll be resettling them from these colonies into more specific ones. Here on our mining nexus we have the same situation on ground efficiency, everything here is going for the mining districts, we could actually provide something like the mineral support, however this would increase our trade upkeep per 100 minerals, which in my opinion is not worth it at all, so we just keep this world right here, we can actually just deprioritize the logistic drones and the biology subroutines since those jobs are worthless in a mining world. For our forge nexus you can see that we have built up so many forges that all of our replicators were actually sent to this so it is a pretty bad world at the moment. However we can just resettle all of these jobs that we have unemployed on the mining nexus, our idle drones and also on the ground efficiency nexus. This change alone already got us the 300 replicators that we wanted and a little bit of extra research, which we do not need at the moment, so we can deprioritize those jobs as well. And actually this time, since it is an advanced resource output world, we will have our logistic drones at the maximum capacity, because later on we'll have loads and loads of biotrophies here increasing the complex drones output, so it makes sense for have the logistic drones here as well. On Alpha Nexus, one of our tech worlds, you can see that we have filled up all of the research jobs, so we should keep expanding it. One problem that you can already see here is that we do not have the engineering and the society research specialization buildings, so we're just gonna do that for this planet, and this should already fix the job balance between them and increase the job amount. On Portal Nexus B223, we have a very special modifier, which is the portal research area granting us all of these extra resources. We can do that by just creating one more city district which will provide us with 200 extra jobs. We can deprioritize the hunter seekers so they can occupy the replicator jobs as well. We'll also deprioritize the biology subroutine since we do not have any need for a society in this planet. For Fen Hanabi's tree it is our brand new colony, the most recent one. We do have an amenity shortage reducing our stability by a lot, so we'll build a drone storage to fix that problem. We can also remove the collapsed spire to give us 800 more research jobs, however it costs 2000 energy credits to do so. What we can do is grab one of our scientists that has the excavator trait, this guy right here, then it will already reduce 1.3 thousand. We can also activate the edict volatile land clearance, and now it only costs 800 energy credits, then you just go ahead and grab your old official. In this case, since you didn't even have an official, we just remove that guy and deactivate the edict. Here on Technus Primaris, we have a very good output to our calculators because it was the Wankworth system. We already built up the specialization buildings. We could have something to reduce our upkeep if we had the exotic gases to build it. However, since we don't and all of the jobs here are working fine, we'll keep this planet as it is for now. Then we also have the Ultra Mining Nexus, as its name already suggests. It is our 
our last mining planet. We currently already have some jobs here and we could unemploy some of the specialists so they can be employed on better worlds such as Technos Primaris as we just saw. So what we can do is just resettle the aerodromes and they will already begin working on the regular specialist jobs. This world still has around 300 available mining jobs so we'll keep it as it is. We won't build any more districts because we do not want to increase our empire size neither our energy consumption. Here on Beta Nexus another one of our tech worlds we have the same situation as the Winkworth system where we have all of the research and the specialized research buildings and there is still jobs available so we'll keep this world as it is as well. Then we have one two three four five unspecialized planets that we can do whatever we want with them. I don't know if you guys noticed but we do have a lot of tech worlds but one thing that we don't have is good generator worlds and alloy worlds. We only have one alloy and zero generators that will be a massive problem later down the line. So we should specialize at least one of these planets into a generator and two more into alloy worlds. I know that we are producing plus 600 energy credits every single month but a lot of these productions are coming from stations and star bases which do not scale very well into the end game. Here on Japan Prime it is a size 23 world with very low capacity for basic resource output so it is a perfect alloy world for us to have. I actually just built a research lab because I didn't know what I was going to do with it but since it is going to be a forge world we can just start off by building up the heavy industry zone specialization. On Yusun Prime it is also a size 23 world however it has plenty of generator districts so this one will be one of our best generator worlds for us. We can already start by building up one district here and later on specializing it. Here on Yaman Prime we can see that it is a size 18 however it is on a system alongside Beta Nexus which is one of our tech worlds worlds so later on into the game we will have a scientist working here and thus as our sector governor will be a scientist it will make sense for this world to be a science world as well so we start off by building up a research enclave here on C Team Prime, a size 22 world and a relic world, we already know that we have a lot of research output because of the relic world, so this will be another attack world for us. This leaves us with only C Team Prime, I know it's the same name, but I don't know why they copy it. However, this one is only a size 10, very poor basic resource output, so here we can make just a heavy industry, it won't be our most efficient planet in terms of job. Jobs. However, since we will have the Mastery of Nature Ascension Bird and some Orbital Rings, we can get this world up to a size 16 out of the planet size 10, which is kinda good. And because of this, it won't be just a trash planet. Later on, we can even turn this into an Ecumenopolis for having even extra jobs, so not a bad world at all. Now, regarding the jobs for those planets, since we are recently constructing new buildings, we will wait until they are finished so we can just shift the jobs around and specialize the planets better. Hello commander, if you're enjoying my content please consider being a part of our higher ranks and financially supporting the growth of our navy. Depending on your contribution you'll have access to different sections of our military, being able to command an entire fleet and up to a whole sector in our live streams. That will happen almost every weekend. With every contribution the empire grows stronger and you commander will help us shape the future of our universe. And here on our federation, as I was talking before, since we have a better opinion with our allies, we can propose to change the succession type to 40 years, thus making us stay in charge for a little more time. So now that we have finished all of our arc furnaces around our most important systems, you can see that our economy now is producing 600 alloys per month, 500 minerals, only our energy output got completely 
requested. That was because we build up a lot more star bases than we could, thus increasing its upkeep tremendously. But the reason for that is because we need to improve our nanite output if we want to scale up our production later on into the game. But our next video will be trying to improve it even further and going through some very important economic decisions in order to go to the end game the best way possible. Now if you guys enjoyed today's video don't forget to leave that like button because it helps me out a little bit and as always I will see you guys next time.